Hello everybody, this is Andrew Roboto here, and today I would like to pick up where I left off in for part two of the 2005 Red Sox yearbook review, and for this review we'll pick up where we left off, which is Femway Face Off, which in case you need a point of reference, I'll show what I left off off on, sorry, right here. Dropkick Murphy's debut of the new slash old Sox and of Tessie. Inspiring a dance number by Veritech and A-Rod. Before more, send Rivera and delirious fans on their way. And this is where the Red Sox had a marathon against the Yankees. Where the Red Sox overcame a 3-0 deficit, 6-4 deficit, and then a 10-8 deficit. Before beating the Yankees 11 to 10, and this crazy Fenway face-off marathon. Next one's finding the groove. For this one, Orlando Cabrera started his stretch run of great play with a game-winning double, and Martinez got his game face. And this and this game took place against the uh, Blue Jays. Which for that game, um, Johnny Damon scored from first for Pe and Pedro Martinez started for the Red Sox, giving up four runs and eight hits. The Red Sox beat the Blue Jays that day five to four. It's a season recap right there. Late summer sizzle. For the summer sizzle, late summer sizzle, Martinez tossed a quality seven innings before Embry set up a closing folk. Ramirez went deep on with one solo effort as Muller added another. And this game took place against the Rangers, which Red Sox shot out the Rangers two to nothing. That's a brief description right there. Next one is the Deja Vu all over again against the Yankees. It was where the Red Sox kept coming back from the deficits. And this one, or not deficits, Cabrera drove in, and for this game, Cabrera drove in the tying run in the ninth, followed by Dan's goal at RBI. Both runs came off of a disbelieving Rivera while Folk delivered again. And the Red Sox would beat the Yankees that day 3-2. And then clinch hitters and pitchers. For this game, the Red Sox clinched a playoff berth with their win in the series opener against the Rays. Johnny Damon raised a two-run deficit with a three-run homer. And the fifth, and this game going out, were Damon, Ramirez, Veritek, and McCarty, which the bubbly bullpen crew appreciated. The homer was his career high, 19 of the season, Manny Ramirez hit a mammoth blast to center the same inning while Jason Veritek and David McCarty both homered over over a center field fence in the eighth. And Keith Folk tossed a perfect nine to secure the win and a trip to the postseason. Then after that, it was on to the ALDS. And the Red Sox beat the Rays that and the Red Sox beat the Rays that day seven to three to clinch the playoffs. Off. Getting a leg up. In game one of the ALDS against the Angels, Kurt Schilling tended in his business in the opener while Miller's two-run homer started a seven-run fourth inning. That ended with Ramirez's three-run blast. And for this game, despite ag for game one against the Angels, despite aggravating a recurring injury to tend into his right ankle, Kurt Schilling held the Angels to three runs, two earned on nine hits and two walks.
And for game one, let's see. The Sox scored seven runs on the fourth. The team's all biggest postseason inning to provide showing an eight run cushion. The big bulls that inning were two run over by Kevin Miller, three run blast by Manny Ramirez. While the two other ones scored on the bases loaded throwing error by Chon Figgins. The Sox bullpen retired the last seven Angels in order. And Alan Embry got the last out on the seventh. On two pitches, while Mike Timlin struck out three over his last two innings. And for game one, Red Sox defeated the Angels 9-3. to three. Game two was a two-offsman ship, which the feature of that game, Martinez kept the Sox in the game until Veritek tied it up in the sixth. Ramirez drove in the go-ahead run in the seventh, and Folk retired six in the row in the safe. And with those two-offsman ship key players, Red Sox won game two, eight to three. Game three was the up, up, and away game. And with a score tied in the tenth, Ortiz launched one into the night. A w- one walk off in the night, emptying the Sox dugout. Rescored the winning run before Ortiz reprised a familiar scene. And for this one, the Red Sox. Swept the the Angels in the ALDS on Ortiz's walk-off homer. And the Red Sox beat the Angels 8-6 in 10 innings. And then it was on to the ALCS. The historic ALCS, which I will get into in a little bit. Alright, game one was a little too late for the Red Sox. Mussino was perfect for 6.1 innings while Schilling was game but lame. Veritek led a 5-run uprising in the 7th for the 2-run homer. And the Sox closed it to 1 in the 8th on an Ortiz treble before the Yankees responded to put the game away. As the Yankees went on to win game 1, 10-7. And then game two, whoa, daddy. Martinez kept the Yankees and their fans at bay until Olerad smacked the two run home in the sixth. I don't know that, guys. Cabrera knocked in the Sox's only run while Moore kept the game close with some fancy glove work. And this game was the whoa, daddy, because the Yankees fans chanted to Martinez, who's your daddy? <laughs> and of course the game ended with David with Mariano Rivera striking out David Ortiz striking out David Ortiz in the ninth as the Yankees won game two three to one game three which is the next one will forever be the night of horrors as in this game few things went right for the hometown team as Damon just missed, while Muller, Ramirez, and Ortiz were caught in the act. There was, however, a Sox hero for the evening as Wakefield saved the bullpen for other better days. And this will forever be the night of horrors because the Red Sox were blown out by the Yankees 19-8 as the Yankees took a 3-0 lead, putting the Red Sox in the hole. But that was about to change starting from Game 4. Game four was life support. Ortiz ended a long day's night with a 12th inning homer. Pinch running for Miller in the ninth. Robert stole the show at second and bounced around the bases on Miller's single to tie the game as Mariano Rivera blew the save in the ninth inning. Red Sox would beat the Yankees in game five, six to four in 12 innings. Or Game 4, sorry, my bad. The Red Sox beat the Yankees in Game 4, 6-4 to four in 12 minutes. Game 5, though, was the same day service. I forgot to read, I forgot to read this one. I'm going to read this one. David Ortiz smashed, for Game 4, David Ortiz smashed a 12th inning. Two-run walk-off homer off of Paul Quantrill. I don't know how to pronounce that. Into the Yankees' bullpen long after stirring the Red Sox' ninth inning rally. Had four extra innings, down four to three. 
Sox would tie the game up when Kevin Miller worked the lead off. Walk off of Mario and Rivera. Dave Roberts went in a run for Miller. Stole second for scoring on Bill Miller's single. Derek Lowe was called for the start due to Kurt Schilling's ankle injury. And the decision used Tim Wakefield in relief that night before it pitched five plus innings on the Red Sox relievers. Combined to allow but one run to Yankees hitters. Game five of same day service. Ortiz hit a homer in the eighth to draw the Sox up in a run before pinch runner Roberts had a score. Courtesy of Veritex sacrifice fly. Ortiz then played short ball, dropping a single into the right. In the 14th, send Damon home. Wakefield spun three innings of a one hit ball for the win. For this one, down 4 2. Red Sox came back, tied the game up. And then in the fourth, in the game's tied to the 14th when Johnny Damon worked a one out walk and moved a second. And then Dave Ortiz would hit another walk-off to give the Red Sox a 5-4 win. So the Red Sox beat the Yankees in Game 5, 5-4, five in 14 innings to start the historic comeback. Game 6, blood slaps and cheers. Schilling soaked it to the Yankees for 7 innings, while Bellhorn's dotty 3-run homer in the 4th gave the Sox a cushion. A-Rod chops his way down to first base and was called out for interference. Game 6 will forever be remembered where Alex Rodriguez slapped the ball to Browns on Arroyo's hand. It was called out for interference and Derek Jeter had to go back to first base because his run was nullified. And the Red Sox went on to win Game 6, 4-2. to two. Game 7 will be the top of the heap Ortiz's two-run homer in the first got the Sox on that's going. While well, Damon's grand slam in the second provided a cushion. Bellhorn has sole shot in the eighth. Low limited the Yankees to one or six innings. As the Red Sox got their payback for the night of whor- for the night of whores in game three by blowing out the Yankees in game seven, ten to three. And then it was on to the World Series. The Red Sox are, to this day, the only team to come back from a three games to none deficit in the ALCS. Only team to this day. Nobody thought they would, including including myself, but they did. Here's a description right here. And a picture of the Red Sox celebrating. Twelve months after a bitter result in the 2003 ALCS Game 7, Wakefield and Veritek, along with all their teammates, embraced the sweet fairy tale end. On to the World Series. Game 1 was third time the charm. And of course the best part about 2004 World Series. Was not only did the Red Sox win their first title in 86 years. But also they never trailed. They took the lead for good in all four games. Never gave it up. For Game 1, Bellhorn poked one of Pesky's one off Pesky's pulled in the eighth inning to put the Sox on top for good, earning a bop from Veritek. Ortiz had started things off in the first with a three run homer. Folk closed the door with one and a half innings of shutout work. And for game one, game one was close because the Cardinals crept back to tie the game up with, in the sixth with Edgar and Torre and Larry Walker hitting. Consecutive RBI doubles, but the Red Sox pulled off a win. They won Game One, 11 to nine. Game Two was a stitch in time. Schilling stifled the Cardinals over six innings of work. Veritex triple in the first inning played at two runs, while Cabrera drove in the final two runs in the si- in the sixth. Embry kept the Cardinals. At bay by striking out over side in the eighth. And as you can see right there, that is Kurt Schilling's body sock, which the body sock is another memorable thing for 2004. The body sock. The Red Sox won game two, six to two. On a two run double in the fourth, or not in the fourth. Two run double in the fourth. 
and and Orlando Cabrera driving a single, drove in the, which draw, which would drive in the final two go ahead runs. Game three, a red tag day. Manny had a solo in the first inning before pegging Walker at the plate in the bottom of the frame. After a strong throw from Ortiz, Moore thwarted a Cardinals third inning rally by tagging out Supin returning to third base. Martinez was all but unhittable setting down the final 14 batters he faced. And that would help. And Pedro Martinez dominating. But 